4, verse 4, it reads like this. And Jesus answered them. I'm reading from the English Standard Version, so it looks a little different. Mm -hmm. So it says, and Jesus answered them. See that no one leads you astray. Amen. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. What does Christ mean? It is the anointed one. Many will come saying that they are the anointed one. And they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed for this must take place. But the end is not yet. For nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And there will be famine and earthquakes in various places. Sounds like today. And these are the beginning of the birth of pains. They will deliver up to tribulations and put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will rise, will arise and lead many astray. Mm. And because of lawlessness, that's what cousin said already, huh? Then we talk about that. Lawlessness will be increased and the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel is to the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations to the end will come. Amen. 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 Number one, please. Thank you. Amen. You may be seated. Listen, the topic, the topic that I have for a few moments is don't be tricked by the devil. Don't be tricked by the devil. And then for a subtopic that I may enter Inter, in, intertwined with this uh, it came to my head um, don't fall and since we, we've been talking about deception I said don't fall for a Decepticon <laughs> don't fall for a Decepticon <laughs> don't fall for it thank you don't fall for a Decepticon and I, I laughed about it when I when I had it but you know what it makes sense. Because anybody that's seen the movie, they understand how they are deceiving people into transforming into something that they're not. And try to act like they're a part of us, but really are not. you got to watch out for folk like that. Because they're being deception. So you might as well call them a Decepticon. They, they come in, they look like you and I, but on the inside... They're nothing but filthy rags. And they come to transform to try to steal you away. And a lot of times they're successful in stealing folk away because they're looking at what they see and not looking what's on the inside. Mm -hmm. They're not judging. In other words, the Bible says, know those that labor among you. We have stopped trying to know those that labor among us. We have stopped all we do is to say, hey, you look good. Hey, come preach at my church. Hey, come church. I, I, I don't know you. I ain't met you. I don't know who you are. Can I get to know you for a second? Because maybe I may not want you to come here. It might be the devil. It might be the devil. You got to watch out for them Decepticons. You got to watch out for folk that are wolves in sheep clothing. So you can't be tricked by the devil. You can't be tricked. So watch this. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 3 and 4. And I will email this out like I normally do. 2 Corinthians 3 and 4. I mean, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 and 4 it says, But I'm afraid that as a serpent, there goes that word, deceived Eve by his cunning, by cunning, your thoughts will lead you, will, excuse me, will be led astray for the sincere of a pure devotion to Christ. Verse 4 is what I want to highlight. It says, for if some comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaim, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you receive, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with a readily enough. In other words, you have folk that are accepting another gospel, they are accepting another Jesus. They are receiving a different spirit. 
They are accepting a different gospel. What is the gospel? This is the great news and it's proclaiming um, the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. You can let that up, cousin. Thank you. And so, what happens is, well, first let me start off like this. I told, I told First Lady, I was disturbed in my spirit. And um, I, told, I told cousin, um, I was like, man, I got to pray this thing. <laughs> I got to pray this thing out because this thing is crazy. Um, and I was telling um, Elder Al last night when we was at the game, I said, this, there was a brother on YouTube who said that there's no Jesus and there's no resurrection. Oh. And I sat there and I said, you got to be kidding me. And so, and the interesting thing is, and I, and I know now the reason why I was, I was led to look at that, is that this brother started off being a Christian, even wrote Christian songs, even wrote about the rapture coming. And then he said he got enlightened with the truth. Uh -oh. <laughs> he, he, wait a minute, he had the truth, but was, remember, I, I told y'all, folk are being enlightened. I told y'all. He got enlightened, and he said, I have to teach you the truth, that there's no Jesus. And we have evidence, even if you don't want to look in the Bible, that Jesus existed. Yes. Some of y'all have seen God's not dead too. When the guy was in the court and he proved that Jesus existed, that Jesus is history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this brother had the audacity to tell folk Jesus is not real. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought about the scripture and I thought about our Bible study and I said, you know what? It's sad, but it's true. There's a lot of people that believe Jesus is not real mm -hmm. because they're being enlightened by another spirit. Bible says if you receive another spirit or another gospel or another Jesus. Even atheists will say that Jesus existed. Right. Yeah. They'll say that he lived. They just don't believe that he's God. But they'll say that he was alive. Right. You cannot defy. You cannot deny the fact that Jesus is real. Right. Almost every religion tries to copy Jesus. Right. Almost every doctrine tries to have some kind of form of the Godhead. Right. You can't deny that he's not real. Mm -hmm. That's blasphemy. Mm -hmm. That's right. That may be one of the things that he will not forgive. You are denying the, 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 the existence of who I am. Mm -hmm. so you can't default for the deceptions or these Decepticons. And watch, watch what happens. Soon as, I mean, it was red flag. Soon as I saw the video, he had a cross. But he had a circle, so it was an unk. He had an unk on his podium, and he had an unk on his light. And he's dressed in a suit, preaching, and, and, and you know, and, say, and he called himself an elder and all this other kind of stuff. And I'm like, brother, you got your, you got your wires crossed. <laughs> you got your wires twisted crossed. <laughs> Positive and negative goes in the right place. You, you got them twisted. But the fact remains is that he believed what he was saying is true. And have people in the audience going, yeah, preach it. They're crazy. Preach it. Then he said, he even taught them how to deceive us. Now, don't tell the church that uh, there's no rapture, no resurrection, but say, the Bible says. He said it. He says, so say, tell them the Bible says this. I look just like you said the praise. I was like, this fool is crazy. <laughs> Reprobate mind. So what are we saying here today, 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 church? That we cannot we cannot let no one lead us astray. You've got to know the gospel for yourself. I'm, we're not just doing homework and quizzes just for anything. We're doing it so that you can have a foundation, a rock, that you can stand on, the chief cornerstone rock, Jesus Christ, and you can build your house upon a solid rock. Not some foolishness to tell you that there's no Jesus. Or to how to teach people how to how to how to enlighten others. He was indoctrinating some, he was indoctrinating people how to enlighten others. Because you already have some people that are on the fence about God because they're deep, because they don't study. 
anytime, anytime you say you're deep, right, you're just not studying. Because when you begin to study the word of God, you find that there's so much things. You're just like, uh -huh. right. man, I don't know where to go. <laughs> Do I go back to Revelation? Do I go to Genesis? Then you read Revelations, and now it's talking about what God was talking about in Genesis. Man, you get all kind of, you just, Lord, just help me. Amen, amen. Right. So there's really no sense of being quote unquote deep because it, we're, our mind is like a little sand crystal. Uh -huh. And God is like the whole sand itself. Yeah. His mind is infinite. Mm -hmm. The sand keeps going down and deeper and deeper into the ocean. Places we can't even we can't even walk to. We gotta swim and, and we gotta hold our breath. You wanna you wanna access the, the knowledge of God? Our bodies can't even handle the full knowledge of God. Amen. Man, we 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 just like whoa over the few things we read in Ezekiel. Just imagine you have the whole mind of God. Everybody just mad. They just this man. God, how? That's true. So verse four says, and Jesus answered them in Matthew. It says, "See that no one leads you astray." Jeremiah says, twenty nine to eight. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Do not listen to, do not let your prophets or your diviners who are among you deceive you and do not listen to the dreams that they dream. Wow. Huh. Mm. Do not listen to the preachers. Do not listen to the, to uh, Dion Warwick, the psychic. <laughs> Don't listen to California psychic because they're coming to deceive you. Uh, that's right. Do not even trust the dreams that they have because their dreams are even corrupted. Jeremiah says. That's a word for a day. You can't listen to everybody. You can't listen to what they're saying. You better open up that Bible and read that Bible. The mere fact that that brother said there's no Jesus and no resurrection, he hasn't read 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians chapter 15. It's either one, but it's Corinthians chapter 15. Where the dead in Christ shall rise. I heard some young people say that. Amen. The dead in Christ shall rise first. To say that there's nobody that's going to rise, you have not exegeted your Bible. You have not read your Bible. Right. There you go, trying to be deep again. <laughs> Ephesians 5 and 6 says, Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Don't let them they got words that are empty. Don't let them trick you. That's right. Colossians 2 and 8 says, See it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the element of the spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. Don't let them take you hostage by their smooth talking. Don't let them take you hostage because they're a smooth operator. They can operate smoothly and they can deceive you. Don't let them hold you hostage. Uh -huh. You got people that are very intelligent and can hold a conversation and get you hooked. Yeah. But he says even them smooth ones, don't let them hook you. Ladies, don't let them smooth brothers try to sweet talk you. <laughs> brothers, don't let them ladies try to subdue you. Be seductive. I can't even say it. I can't even say it. <laughs> but it's the truth. We'll talk about that in a second. But it's the truth. Don't let them, because they talk a good game, don't let them get you. Because they know some history doesn't mean they know Christ. That's right, that's right. That's what scriptures say. Philosophy. You know, you, you, I'm with the Greek gods. Man, I'm just with Zeus. Okay, let them be with Zeus. Don't let them try to, you know, I, had, I, I, have, a, I have a friend at work who's like, man, you know, uh, the Greeks are deep. You know, you know our calendars from the, the Roman Empire, and he's talking about uh, Plato and Aristotle and Socrates uh -huh. and Zeus and all. And I'm like, yeah, brother, I know who you're talking about. I know them. But it doesn't mean I'm going to judge my life upon what they said. Wow. Come on. It doesn't mean I'm going to live the life of uh, Julius Caesar. Come on. Right? You know, I'm like, no. 
one of the great things that was happening is like people in those times were trying to blame the race line or the the uh, not the race line. What I want to say, um, man and woman, they were trying to blend it together. Gender. They were trying to blend the gender together. Gender benders. Think of, now, it's true. It's a true fact. You have people back in the biblical day. You have people back in the biblical days in the different ages who went both ways because they didn't want to be rejected by any sex. They want to be worshipped. So they're, I like that. I'm going to use that. Gender bending. But it's the same thing that's going on today. Am I right about it? I went to 24-hour fitness, and I just, I mean, I went to plan of fitness just going to the restroom, and there's a lady in there, and I was like, uh, okay, excuse me, and, and she, she worked there, but she said, you know what, by law now, if a girl identifies with a guy, they can go into the men's bathroom. So I told the girls, I said, look, y'all better go two by two, I don't care how old you are, because it may be a dude that has some weird thoughts that want to go into the bathroom. You've got to be careful. They're bending the rules. They're trying to bend the law of physics. Right? They have this philosophy. They're enlightened. But what did the Bible say? By another spirit. It's Satan. He's the other spirit. Satan has enlightened them to gender cross, to cross genders, allow them to make these ridiculous laws that are hurting the Christians, but the Bible says, thank you, but the Bible says, don't worry about it. This has to happen. And it's just the beginning. Brothers and sisters, this is just the beginning. We just read it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 says, let no one deceive you in any way. For that day will not come Unless the rebellion comes first. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the revealed the son of destruction. I'm just on verse 4. I haven't even got to verse 5 yet. 1 John chapter 3, verse 7 says, Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. The he is Jesus. Jesus is righteous. So he says, look, listen everybody, don't let nobody trick you. Don't let nobody sweet talk you. Don't fall for them Decepticons. Don't fall for them. Don't fall for these people that look good, that smell good. In other words, don't fall for these people that can sing real good, that can hoop real good, that can shout real good, that can dance real good, because they just may be a Decepticon. Because you see that they will transform into who they are soon as they get off the pulpit. You want to know who's right? They will transform and take off their little their little uh, uh, mask and be who they really are. Arrogant, prideful, crazy. Now, nobody nobody is perfect, but there's a sense of being humble and there's a sense of just being arrogant. Uh -huh. You so high and lifted up, you just arrogant. You just walk on your own cloud. Right. Jesus can't even get on your cloud. Right. Mm -hmm. So he says, let no one deceive you. So I don't know why I'm here, but we have to get back to getting to know everybody. We have to get right to get in, to know everybody. Get to know your neighbor. You know, back in the day, you would go and you would hang out. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Right? To know everybody. Especially in those small towns. I went back to Mississippi one time. Everybody was my cousin on the whole street. And that was one city. But, oh, Maurice is over there. Maurice is over there. But everybody knew who I was. In other words, they knew who they got to know me. We got to get back to knowing one another. That way you can know. Nah, he kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, me and Elder were talking about a musician yesterday who is known for robbing folk and people still employ him at church. Mm -hmm. He's known for robbing the church and they still hire him because he's that good on the organ. Seriously? Mm -hmm. Where's the discernment? <laughs> Where is it? It's sad, but it's true. And he told me, I was just, I, it stuck with me last night. 
I said it's a known fact and folks still want them. Because he can play the ivories, the black and whites. He can play them good. No, I'd rather go without a musician right. than employ a musician right. Right. who steals my stuff. Oh, that's right. I'm coming to praise the Lord, but I'm, I have the motive to check the church. Oh, you got a motif? Let me get that motif. Uh -uh. Wow. Am I lying? Wow. But you still employ them? Where's the discernment? Where, where, where's God? Right. Has it come to that to where you're so desperate that you will get a known criminal to be the minister of music in your church to release spirits, criminal spirits? No, to release chaos into the church. You want a criminal to release chaos into your church just so that you can have an organ play with you while you're preaching. Is it that serious? Did we talk about it in our Bible study? Chaos is going to destroy chaos. Yeah. He said, right in Ezekiel, he said, on Tyre, he said, I'm going to take the sea, and the sea, you know, uh, I'm going to take the sea, and the sea is going to destroy you. That sea represents chaos. That's why there's no sea in heaven. There's a street. We don't see no water, no big pool of water, because water will represent chaos. She talked about the fish god. Chaos. God took chaos to kill chaos. Didn't it say that kingdoms will rise against kingdoms? Nations will come against themselves? He's taking one chaos and taking another chaos to destroy chaos. In other words, sin is killing sin. We just sitting there. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> you fighting a fight that God already said sin was going to kill itself right. <laughs> sin was going to kill itself there was a post on Facebook about uh, Kurt Franklin and Kurt Franklin happened to uh, give a speech for accepting the gospel and he was talking about that we need to stand up and we need to do our duty as Christians it really wasn't a bad speech. He said we need to stand up. But the sad part was, is that TBN edited out his speech. Now he talked about unifying. He even prayed. And everybody at the war ceremony actually stood up and began to pray. But they edited it out. Not a secular station, a, a station that's supposed to be devoted to God. Mm. TBN. Mm. I wonder whose agenda they're following. Why would you edit it out a moment where people were standing together in unity to pray about their nation? He made a valid point. When black people are killed, when white people are killed, we should say something. When cops are killed, we shouldn't just say anything. When black people are killed, we should be saying something when anybody is killed. We should stand together. It was a very good speech. And they edited it out. Kristen Station. You ain't got no commercials. You can come back. It's your station. The Word Network will block out a time for a conference to come on. Yeah. It'll say uh, Bishop Jones is coming on, but they're like, wait a minute, we got a convention. They will let that convention last until it's over. It's supposed to be a Christian network. But the Bible says, many will come in my name saying that I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. So you got people, even in Christian broadcasts, that don't want the truth of God to come out. They don't want unity in the church. They don't want people to come together. Matthew 24, 11 says, and many false prophets will arise and lead many to stray. Jeremiah says in 14, 14, he says, and the Lord said to me, the prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I did not send them, nor did I command them to speak. They are prophesying to you a lying vision, worthless divination, and the deceit of their own minds. So when these people are coming and speaking the word that they got a word from the Lord, and you know it's not sitting right in your spirit, they're coming from self. Right. They're speaking a lie. Right. You want to believe a lie? You want to believe the truth about God? Don't fall for it. That's why God has already exposed Satan. He's really exposed him. He says, be sober. First Peter, 
5 and 8. He says, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. Three points. Satan's strategies. He wants persecution, seduction, and deception. He wants to persecute you. He wants to seduce you. And he wants to deceive you. Those are his strategies that he uses over and over and over and over and over again. If you really think about it, it really boils down to those three. Persecution, you're going to go through something. Right? Seduction, I'm going to try to, to weaken you so that I can attack you. Then deception, I'm just going to, I'm just going to lie to you. I'm, I'm just going to make up the best thing I can make up. So persecution. Persecution really can be to be singled out for harassment. <laughs> the enemy will single you out just so he can harass you. John 15, verse 8, 18 to 20 says, If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. Right, okay. If you were of the world, the world would love you as, it, as its own. But because you're not of the world, but I chose you, out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute, persecute you. If they keep my word, they will also keep yours. If they persecuted Jesus, what makes you think that you're excluded? You have no immunity. <laughs> you can't buy no immunity in this. When you take on the name of Jesus, you have to know that the enemy is going to try to harass you. He's going to try to violence. He's going to try to moderate you. He's going to do whatever he can to get you from serving God. Right. The problem is, is that we want to serve God but not be harassed. Right. We want to serve God and not go through things. Man, the other night I had one of the worst dreams I've had in a long time. I got up. I said that devil is a liar. I got in my car. I was yelling. No, you ain't attacking me. You crazy. Don't you come after me like that. I said it just like I'm telling you now. You didn't lost your mind coming to me like that. Oh boy. You better get up out of here. And name what was bothering me. Harassing me in my dream. The enemy will try to come up and shake you. And God will allow it to see what you're going to do. Are you going to sit there? God, why? <laughs> Are you going to open your mouth and fight? Man, you crazy. Don't you come at me like that. And the next night I slept in peace. Get out of my house. I don't know. I was like, I don't even know how you got up in here. But who, however you got up in here, I'm selling everything in Jesus' name. You ain't coming through my TV. You ain't coming through my, sho my, my, my shoes. You ain't coming through nothing. You got to do that. If you don't do that, you put yourself in a position to be weakened and to be and to stay weakened. So some nuggets about persecution. Death, the event of dying or departing from life, right? Distress. A, this is a state of distress, right? An oppressive state of physical, mental, social, and economic or econo economic adversity. Another one is to suffer pain. Another one is prison, not sometimes a, a, a literal prison, but a, 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 a mental prison. You can be in prison in your mind. Mm -hmm. There are more people that's locked in jail in their mind than people in jail. Right. And the church has bought into the conspiracy that they want to keep people locked. So they preach the same message just for you to praise just a little bit, but you still leave the church locked in jail. It's a con. I'm telling you, it's a con. I'm going to trick you so then you, hey, I felt good. Did you like what I said? Yeah, touch your neighbor, tap him, slap him. Then you slap him, you go outside, and then you're mad because you slapped somebody, but you didn't get delivered. You still lost. They're conning you. It ain't... I love good hooping, hollering. That's good. You know I like to holler too. But it's got to mean something when you go downtown. If it don't mean nothing, then it's nothing. You're getting caught. They came from themselves, not God. 
even if they say it in a small voice and they have humility, oh God, if they're not saying nothing, they're still calling you. It doesn't matter how raspy your voice is. It doesn't matter how humble you sound. If the words don't mimic Jesus, if the words don't lead you to Jesus, if you are not being broken, if you're not being challenged to think, then it's not from God. God will put you in a position to think. You'll be like, huh? Yes. Man, this is crazy. Right. I've got to change my life. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Hey, Shatama. Change, huh? You can't be conned, but the church has bought into the new world order of conning people. Right. Mm. I was watching this thing. I recommend you watch it. It talks about it's called Hillary's America. Uh-oh. <laughs> Just watch it. Just watch it. It talks about slavery. I'm not gonna talk about that. But it talks about the lady. That made Planet Parenthood, Planned Parenthood. Oh, yeah. This brother, who was from Mumbai, who did research, found this out. He got documents stating that the lady who started was going to the black pastors, mm -hmm. telling them it was okay to get an abortion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She made a treaty with the pastors. Yep. And the pastors accepted it. She did. He has live phone calls of people calling, and he played it, saying, I want to donate to your cause and open up another uh, Planned Parenthood and another black community because I don't want them by my children. It's on videotape. It's on tape. I heard it. I, that's the devil. But remember, she wanted to make new creatures just only perfect creatures you see those movies where the only the selected few will last yes somebody saw 2012 that movie 2012 only the selected few is going to last we're going to have the best of the best the best books the best music the best leaders the best of the best so these seeds will last you can't be god right but they have bought in this is not new this is an old spirit she wanted the black people to not exist no more. And it's not, I'm not trying to go there. I'm just telling you what the enemy does. He wants to isolate and kill folk just like she was doing. Hitler actually spent time with her. That's how he got his genocide thing. He found out about her. And then you ask yourself, why is the government still allowing this to be in the community? And you know its roots. What's her name? It says she was an awesome lady. Really? She killed folk. She killed folk. I'm just saying. We have to be careful who we connect with. You don't know what their agenda is. That's right. Luke 11 49 says, therefore also the wisdom of God says, I will send them prophets and apostles, some who they will kill and persecute. I'm going to send you real people that are willing to put their life on the line to tell the truth. And the truth is, the devil is a liar. And when you don't expose the truth, you become a part of the same machine that is being connected with the enemy's agenda. I hope I'm, I hope I hope you're getting it. Yeah, yeah. Then he talked about seduce. The word seduce is only used in the Bible as a general meaning to lead astray. So he sends people to lead you astray. Uh -huh. You remember Samson? Uh -huh. Judges 16 and 5 says, And the lords of Philistine came up to her, that's Delilah, and said to her, Seduce him. And see what his great strength lies, and by what means we may overpower him, that we may bind him and hum to humble him, and we will each give you 1,100 pieces of silver. Anytime folk want you to do something and they're offering you money like that, it's a trap. Mm -hmm. It's a trap. This is, this is Samson's second, second woman. The first woman they gave back, he said, I thought you were going to, you know, you didn't like her, so I'm going to give you, I gave her to somebody else. 
He used, they used Delilah to find his weak point. Seduction. The enemy will seduce you. And the enemy has really gotten with the man with porn. They say over 80% of men and women. No, they say 33% for women. So 70% of men is addicted to porn. To seduce them, to get them weak so that they don't stay a man. Wow, look at that. 33% of women are addicted to porn. But a whopping 80%. Delilah, she was used. Jezebel. Balaam, he told Balak how to get the children of Israel. He says, let, let, let them pretty girls walk by. They're going to holler at them. And that's what happened. Our men are being seduced by liberty, by Jezebels, so that they will stay there and give all their money instead of being home with their family. Or be a man and take care of their kids. They're being seduced. By the devil. You know the devil he go both ways. He don't care as long as he gets you. That's how the devil goes. My God. He wants to seduce you. To find a weak point. Just like he does the ladies. Oh he got a six pack. Woo. Right. Don't they do it on TV. Everybody just get weak in the knees. Oh. 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 They want to get you weak. You Okay. They'll use music to get you in the mood, to get you weak, to get you vulnerable, to get at your weak point, which is your virginity. Come on. And so the enemy will hire the man who has been in a strip club to seduce the women who are in church to get at their virginity, to get them hooked. So that they stay out of church and they stay with him. You've got a lot of women that when they find a man who they say quote unquote is good. They stop coming to church. Because the man was hired by the enemy. Because he's in the club saying you got to look this way. I want to put my beard here and here and here. And so they pull the woman out of church. The enemy started with the man in the club. The man went and got the woman and the kids and now they don't go to church. The whole family has been depleted but he started with the man. It don't matter if you're married or not, because ain't nobody getting married that much anymore. No. Boyfriend and girlfriend, they're just pulling you out. Girl, you look good. And then they sing about how you need to look. So then you got people, they got, I saw someone, Steve Harvey, they got a paper thin, remember you saw that, a paper thin model. There are people that want to be the size of this paper. He showed it. I'm like, are you serious? So then you have ladies who have complexes. That they skin, I'm like, girl, you already skinny. You don't need to be any more skinnier. Matter of fact, you need some green. Get some greens. Get some meat on you. That's right, baby. Be healthy. Amen. 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 I'm going to feed you some chicken. Let it be so. Let it be so. Amen. Some potatoes. Amen. Some cornbread. Yeah. Oh, there you go. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is the reality. He'll use the man to be in a strip club to then preach to a woman how they ought to look. I know folk that say this. To preach to a woman how you need to look. You need to be a Coca-Cola girl. So then now the lady goes and gets plastic surgery and, 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 and enhances her bust and or they'll enhance their lip or they enhance their behind, right, so that they can be this Coca-Cola bottle shape. Mm -hmm. But then, here's a twist. Then you get men who flip the other way and you put them on a magazine. So now the women who's authentic women having a hard time trying to compete with a factory-made man. Come on. Oh, my God. Wow. You got a factory-made man who's now a woman competing with a woman who was a woman because she became a woman because she was a woman. She was naturally a woman, born a woman, but you got a factory made man who's now modeling. You can't tell the difference. 
You can't tell the difference. But they're seducing, seductive. They want to get you weak by any means necessary. Don't you fall for that Decepticon. It's in the church. They will preach you. Oh, sister, they're reading you. They're, they're, they're a witch. They're reading you. They say, oh, your father, who you start crying. So they think it's, you think it's prophetic, but they're reading you. they reading you. They tapped into the witch. Because if it's a prophetic word from the Lord, whether you react or not, God said it. You don't have to cry and roll on the floor and, and curl in a little ball for it to be a prophetic word. That's just, sh that's just, sh no, 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 no. Matter of fact, you need to be able to listen so you can understand if it's holy or not. But the church has given you a con, excuse me, giving you a con and said, you got to fall, you got to shake. Then you got the preachers, you better accept it, fall out. Fall out! Uh -uh. <laughs> Get there! Get there! Get there! Yeah! In a name! Hitting you with the towel? Slapping you all over the place. You bruise. You bamboozle. They breath stink. And you trying to get a word from the Lord. Go, oh, go. What is that? I did that. For real. I experienced that. Me too. I that too. Come on. Why I'm supposed to fall? Oh, better yet. Let me wipe the sweat off my eyebrow and pass the handkerchief around. You're going to get healed. They think they Paul. Come on, let me, let me spit on this. Let me wipe your eye. You're going to be healed. Because Jesus did it. I can do it. You ain't Jesus. But they're tricking you. They're, they're being this. They go to the next point. They're, they're doing a form of deception. They're deceiving you. These Decepticons up in the church put on their little spiritual jacket and <laughs> hallelujah. Mm, mm. That's why sometimes the music has to be right because they can't operate unless there's a sinner praying for them. That's right. That's hey, right. if you got somebody who's anointed to pray for them, it's hard for them to operate. That's right. They can't operate unless there's another sinner playing with them. That's why the guy want to hire the guy that's robbing because he's sinning. So he needs somebody to corroborate his ministry. I need another sinner to play chaos while I'm preaching chaos. And shot my my God. So a deception means to twist. They twist the word. They twist you into thinking that you're something when God hasn't even told you that was your ministry. They change the meaning, or they be vague about it, or they're misleading. You can't hold, you can find them. You can't hold them down. That was what well, Lord willing. What you mean, Lord willing? Just answer the question. If you know, you know. If you don't, you know. Huh. Is Jesus real? Lord willing, I think he's real. I, I believe that he's real. <laughs> I mean, the song says, yes, he is real, for I can feel him now. So he's got to be real. Lord willing, he's real. Really? <laughs> you know I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> Lord willing, I think so. I, I'm, I, you're probably sure. You can't hold them down. You probably thinking about folk you know. You can't hold them down to nothing. They deceiving you. They fake. They fake. Just let them go. They fake. You can't tie them down to nothing. They don't want to be set down in one position. They got to be everywhere. And then when they get into position, they gotta flaunt their title. The oh, fake. Uh -huh. You don't need a title to flaunt your position. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm Bishop Holiness from the Episcopal uh, uh, African American Methodist Baptist Church Kojic Boulevard. I was a bishop. Now I'm an apostle. I'm a prophet. But then I went. I went to an ambassador. But now I'm a bishop again. You don't know who you are. They're doing it. Standing up, just being crazy. So then another one is a cause. They want to lead them astray in a falsehood. Come on, man. You, you come to my church, you're going to get to heaven. No, I'm not. You're going to let me to hell. You're going to lead me right to hell. Because what you say is not even a Bible. 
You can't hold you can't hold them to anything, especially if they open up a scripture and don't talk about what they read. Right. Oh. They go all the way around and never get to the point. I don't know why the Lord, I don't know why the Lord is leading me this way. <laughs> the Holy Ghost just leading me this way. Don't have a scripture to support it. It's a topical. It's just a topic. You still need a scripture to support the topic. They're crazy. They're Decepticons. And they're in high places. Because more Decepticons want them to be high. They like chaos. Have you ever been around folk that just like chaos? Yeah. They just love to just be chaos. When everything is good, they, oh, 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 what's going on? But soon as all hell break loose, praise the Lord. God is going to fix this. Ha, hey, hey, he's going to fix this. They love chaos. Really? So you just like the wind. You just like the sea. Just. <laughs> and then they act, causing someone to believe in an untruth. So then you know when they like, they gotta pretend. They gotta. They gotta pump it up. They gotta. It's gotta be the next big thing. Oh, this is the next big thing. God is doing this. They gotta have the, you know, they gotta have the wind. They gotta have the the strings. I hear God. Oh God, the next big thing is coming. They put it on a show. You didn't see Ezekiel falling around, rolling on the ground. Now he acted out. Jeremiah cried. Moses just saw. Peter and Paul heard. Peter saw. Paul heard. But then they're in the name, in the name. They didn't do all of that. <laughs> it don't take all of that. There are some times when God will overpower you really strong yeah. and you'll feel a quickening. That's different. Yeah. But every time, in the name of, it don't take all of that. It don't take all of that. If God told you a word, speak it. But some people are trained to only move in a certain way because they're deep. So they train to move in a certain way to minister. They don't know what they're talking about. But this is the life we live in. This is the time we live in. What are they doing? They're using trickery. They're rolling dice to see if you're going to see if they're going to get a seven. And they're rolling dice on your salvation. Don't fall for them Decepticons. Don't fall for them. They're conning. That's why con is in Decepticon. They are conning you. Right. Just like our, these politicians, they're conning you. They're only telling you what they want you to hear so you'll vote for them. They're only telling you what they want to preach you in the pulpit so you'll pay your offering. Because they're not teaching you that this is a gift that you honor to the Lord. You're not doing this for something in return. You're doing this because you honor God and he is first. You are lifting him up. He'll give you a benefit because you're doing it. But you're doing this to lift him up. No. But they preach a message that gets your money. Oh, if I don't preach this, then so-and-so is going to take the offering. Get a smaller church then. Don't try to build your church to be 5,000 people. Right. What does it mean that you have filled out 5,000 people? It's like a short guy, four foot, trying to get an eight foot truck. What do you can't even get to the car? Wow. <laughs> you gotta, if you got to get a step suit to get in the car, then you don't need to be driving it. Right. <laughs> if, if you got to keep preaching just one type of message, then maybe you're not called or two. You need to get a smaller church. Stop trying to grow too fast. People want to grow. They like when people ask me, Pastor, and the first one asks how many people we got. I say, Well, we got a few. We 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 praise the Lord. We're thriving. Right. Let him know. That's it. We're thriving. I just say now we're thriving. It doesn't matter about the number. Oh yes, yeah, so you're just still starting out. It doesn't matter about the number. You know what matters to me? And I was so happy. I told First Lady when. I, and I'm closing. I told First Lady, 
Um, when we came from Bible study, I said, I love PBN because we're thriving. Last week's Bible study, the Bible study that I've been coming have been so excited. I come home pumped like, yeah, I'm proud. I don't know how many people I said I was. I think I told everybody I was proud of them. I am. You want to know why? Because there was a time we weren't thriving like that at a Bible study. We would come to Bible study and he'd be falling asleep because you're not into it. Because it's boring. Because you're being lectured. But when you have participation okay, uh -huh. and then you have an idea, like mother was like, well, how many people are getting paid? That's good, right? We're getting nuggets. We're excited about God. Uh -huh. Then Sister Preston, ooh, I can't wait. Sister Kelly, I know she be reading too. Sister Maisha, oh, we ain't got there yet. It's exciting to me to see that people want to read ahead to see what's going to happen. Uh -huh. How much more is it going to get in trouble? I can't believe that it's in the Bible. When you're excited about the word, you're thriving. We're thriving. We're not surviving no more. We're thriving because we're not being led astray. Now you're coming to the realization of who God is for yourself. Not based upon my convictions, but based upon your own convictions. That's the gospel. That's the work of Jesus Christ. Not how many people you have, how many people are actually thriving? How many people are actually reading their word except on Sundays? How many people are actually trying to study, taking notes? Elder right here, he's going to come, man, I got my iPad out. I was researching what you're saying. He never fails. <laughs> He'll look up, never fails. Man, this was deep. Thriving. That's a good thing. I came into Sunday school and Myla, and they was answering all the questions. I'm like, oh, they was listening. And he had some questions. She was thriving. They're thriving. I'm happy. The church is thriving. That's a healthy church. A healthy church thrives, not survives. You just don't be hitting them. Man, you got to, man, you got to. No, you want to do this now because you understand what it means. You're not being deceived. So don't fall for the Decepticon. Don't fall. Don't be tricked by the devil. You don't have to sing it. You don't have to sing a three-part harmony to, to sound anointed. There's no such thing as sounding anointed. I sound anointed. Uh -huh. I look anointed. Wait a minute. Uh, did I sound anointed to you? Mm. Wait, don't fall for the Decepticon. Oh, he's getting ready to preach now. Come on, get your neighbor. Slap him. It don't take all of that. It don't take all of that, brothers and sisters. You know what it takes? A willing mind. A willing heart. A person that's on fire and passionate for God. That's what it takes. It don't take nobody being crazy. It don't take nobody running around to try to prove a point. It takes a willing soul to say, you know what, I'm going to give my all to the Lord. And once you give your all to the Lord, that's all God wants. Amen. Amen. I'm so excited. Let's give God a hand praise. Glory, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we can ready to open up the doors of the church for altar call.